You want some surface to, it's good for their feet. All right, we're gonna transfer these now. You see they were chirping and now they're just trying to get warm under the lamp and that sort of calmed them down. Well that's good, they're relatively calm and you can tell when they're cold because they will stand up on their legs try to reach the lamp. But what I'm going to do now is move the core flute on top and that will help trap in more heat and it will really get nice and cosy in there now. And if they get too hot they'll move away from the lamp. It's now the next morning and I've still got some more that have hatched, so that's good news. So what we're going to do now is take, take these out, transfer them into the brooder, and then I'll still keep the incubator running for another couple of days. So now I'll be transferring these down into the brooder. So it's just a matter of transferring a whole stack. Put them straight under the heat lamp. Yeah, that one, unfortunately. Yeah, he is done. They're getting kind of frisky, and they're a lot of fun to watch, these guys. They're different colours. They'll grow up to be different colours when they're adults as well. It's the third morning now. I've got another batch ready to transfer. They're still hatching in waves. It's a Bit annoying it would be better if they're all together but that's okay i'll take these ones out now and i noticed i think there's a couple others still popping in the shell so i will leave those and transfer them after this They seem to be doing quite well. Very frisky. Very active. It's a good time. And they're not all huddled under the light. So that's a very good sign that there's a good heat, uh, amount of heat in this ink, uh, brooder. transfer the, some of these guys now. At this point I'm not expecting any more to hatch. It's been a number of days, uh, there's been no movement, so right now I'm going to switch it off. And now I will dispose of the eggs. Day three for most of these quail. See, they're pretty relaxed. You see how they're kind of spaced out, which is a good sign, and they've got their legs kicked out. It's funny when they do that. They superman when they sleep, and that means they're very relaxed and super, that means super comfortable. So that's a good sign. And the old one falls over. <laughs> so I just got to keep the waters up because it is quite warm this time of year. Uh, and the food. So it does get stuck in here. I don't like the sound of this, but it 
gets a little bit cracked and ends up in it. Just spin it out. There's some that'll drop there and some of them come in like having a bit of a nibble there. Because I've still got the, the blue cloth that will keep that food that's sprayed over there. And that brings a lot of the food up to the surface because it does get caught in there and they get a lot of the bedding in there and they tend to poop in there as well. Um, but it makes it easy for them to get, get to it. Super healthy. And yeah, I'm very happy with the way things are going at this point. Almost a week old now. We're coming along nicely. Growing so fast. We've now reached day eight for some of the birds. Uh, others would be day seven, day six because of the staggered hatch. They're doing pretty well. They're starting to feather up at this point. I did drop the wattage down on the bulb from 75 to 50 and started playing with the angle to angle it away to create some, I guess, uh, cool attempts. Uh, otherwise they overheat because they're really starting to feather up. It's quite warm this time of year here. Uh, so let's take a look and see how they're doing. Feathers happening. Well, you can see the size. If you look at this little guy, look at the size of that one compared to that one. That's a problem of a staggered hatch. It really creates those differences, and these guys can get trampled quite easily by those ones. One of the other things uh, I like to do is, you can see how that water's been elevated. So you elevate it, because as they get bigger, they tend to mess up the water and get a lot of this, this stuff into there. So what you do is scrape it up into a pile before you put the water down. Same with the food. The food also needs to be shaken out, but they do put some on, onto it. But again, they do dig it out a bit. So I'll actually, Create a bit of a mound, I forget, and they will actually walk up and be able to feed off that. They'll dig it out slowly and it'll slowly sink, but uh, it it works better. It doesn't clog up as much if you. Do that. But as you can see, they're really starting to feather up, looking pretty healthy, pretty active, and the bulb. As I say, I, I just changed the angle take less heat off during the day at night I'll, I'll point it down more uh, it's just got a 50 watt now and I'll turn that off in the next uh, couple of days I'll probably be putting them out I'll turn it off during the day at least but I'll be putting them outside in the in the grow out probably in the next three or four days you'd be surprised how fast they'll grow in the next three or four days so at night I just put the cover on like so and they'll be fine now it's pretty warm that's all they'll need, there's just the one now. It's now day 10 or 11, depending on when these hatched. Uh, they're going pretty well, they're growing really fast. I want to now roll them outside, it's going to be a warm day here in the low 30s Celsius, it's in sort of the 90s Fahrenheit. I want to roll them out to give them some, acclimatise them to the natural light, and I can turn off the heat lamp and just leave them outside all day. It'll actually help dry out the bedding, uh, keep the smell down, get some, get some air to flow through and I'm just getting them accustomed to it because I will put them out in the grow out pretty soon. I just want them to be slightly bigger because I have seen a couple of rats around the backyard and I don't want them to scare the hell out of these, these young quail. So I'll just get them slightly bigger before I put them out there. First thing, I'm going to take out the waters because when I roll it out, they might spill and I don't want it wet inside. Disconnect the power. The 
this is pretty light, so uh, we'll be able to that quite easily. The birds aren't very heavy, the bedding's not that heavy. Uh, it's pretty rough here though. This is smooth surface, so I'll be gentle when I do that part. Nice and slow because... They're not quite flying out yet. Now we're getting some natural light and yeah, they seem pretty happy. They're starting to try to fly. Pretty soon they'll be hitting the roof so I won't be able to keep this open. So I'm going to put the waters back in and then just leave them outside today. Gonna put the waters back in. Oh, it's much beneficial. What you want to do is create a little mound so that the water stays above and it just keeps all the, the bedding being flicked in there. Because the way they're flapping their wings, they fill it up pretty quick. It's just it doesn't stop at all, but it slows down the actual filling of the, the side of that drinker. They're going to be thirsty today. It's going to be hot. Food. I moved the partition along so we still got a little bit more space to go just to give them more room because they're starting to fly like <laughs> that. Uh, you just have to watch that one won't jump over because they'll get stuck in here and there won't be enough water. But it'd be, that'd be okay for half a day like that. So now the birds are at about two weeks and thereabouts. And you can see they're getting quite big. It's getting quite boisterous. I'm going to put them outside probably in the next couple of days. Um, what I'm going to do is give move the petition back further so they can have a bit more space. So they don't jump in. Because they mess up the water as well when they're flying and start to fly up. As you can see, they're starting to be able to come up over the lip of the. They mostly go straight up and straight down, so they don't seem to. Well, just to say that, one jumps. Yeah, they're really growing up now. Alright. I'm going to take this petition out. They like the new area, no doubt. And as always, to keep the smell down, I'm always raking and turning this over. That helps a lot. Otherwise it mats up and it doesn't dry. 